Your Eminence, Archbishop Demetrius, respected members of the clergy, uh, Chairman Karras and the lovely Dr. Maria Karras, and your daughters, who were outstanding, and both of them beautiful. Uh, Paulette Poulos, who gave me a call and asked if I could join you guys today, and right away I said yes, that was a no-brainer, so thank you for thinking of me, and of course I accepted wholeheartedly. Kathy has been the chairperson of putting this great weekend together. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here today, and I want to be able to just get through a lot of great ideas and and you're all here and you've had a great week and, and we're here for Leadership 100 um, for, for so many reasons, but obviously to cherish our heritage, promote Hellenism, and talk about Leadership 100 and talk about new ideas and I know that they're promoting the youth as well and getting them involved. So my first, my first thought is just about Leadership 100 to which I've heard, I've heard of Leadership 100 and I've followed Leadership 100, but I really learned a lot about Leadership 100 more recently because I was excited to be here today. So everything from just new members piling in and over 870 members, also the generous donations for, for the national ministries and, and for emergency relief such as Katrina and September 11th and the youth camps that Leadership 100 is involved but obviously promoting um, our, our religion, our Hellenism, our roots, and keeping it alive for the generations to come. So congratulations to all of you for your good work, for your support and everything you do at Leadership 100. And thank you for inviting me to join you and learn so much more about Leadership 100. That being said, I will move on to my Greek roots, to which that Dr. Mary talked about, and it's true, my mother, and I'm, I will always be Fanny's daughter, um, no matter what I do, which is great, and I'm so proud of her. She founded the Greek American, Roini, um, among other things, and so always was very involved in the Greek community, um, high and low, and it just was something that was always in our house. We always, 24-7, our phone was ringing from Greece. We had diplomats and consul generals in and out, and we would travel, and it was interesting, it was a lot of fun, and it was with great purpose. Um, also, when I get to my point now, I, I look around the room, and we're all here because we're, we're tied because of our, our Greek roots and our hopes for um, it to continue in the generations to come, and I start to think about what are my favorite things about being Greek, right? And the list is so long, and last night I asked the two boys, my two boys, we were at a bonfire, and they were making some s'mores, and I said, boys, what, what do you like about being Greek? And they said, one of them said, Umbari, he meant to say Barea, but he really meant. And the other one said, my big fat Greek wedding. And the, the point was that they love having a big Greek family. They love, they would much rather go to their aunt's house for Bastija than I offered them to go snowmobiling in Wyndham last week. No, no, let's just go to our cousin's house. And that's the truth. The truth is that they are most happy with their family, where they feel loved, they feel embraced, they feel secure, and they feel that they have the support to go on and do great things. So that's, that was what they said was their favorite, but when we sit here in our room, and you can, there's a microphone at the end, so I hope you'll chime in and tell me your favorite, whether it's uh, the religion, the food, the language, the history. Um, there's so much to talk about when you talk about your Hellenic roots. Now, I have to tell you, I'm guilty, and don't tell me that none of you in this room wouldn't have done the same thing. I have two boys, and we work very hard to teach them about everything in the world, from business, to religion, to culture, and I show them the newspaper every day. So here was the newspaper, okay? Now, you guys in the back, I'll tell you, it's a really long word. It comes from the Greek word, okay? And who could resist, right? It's Baraskevi Dekatria Phobics. It's all about, the whole article on the front of the USA Today was all about the year 2012 and how there are more Friday the 13th this year than last year there was only one, but this is a year where there are three. 
And so right away, when you look at that word, it's really big and scary, but not for little Greek kids. Right? So, so and, you know, and like they said the big, in the Greek wedding, right? And there you go. That was your little Greek word. And the kids just saw that movie recently, and they really enjoyed it. They really did. So then I move on, and I talk about Fox News and how I got to this point. The truth is, I had news in the family, right? My mom had the newspaper. And that, that wasn't necessarily my calling, though I supported it. I, ju I just wanted to get into American media and television. And I went to American University, and I studied communications and business. And I started with the internships. I had an internship at News 12 in Long Island. Then I graduated, and I worked at CNN for a while at the show called Sonia Live. It was a talk show. Um, at News 12, I got yelled at at the uh, assignment desk. At uh, CNN, I would beg to just write, coming up next, Sonia talks to Deepak Chopra. I wrote that. You know, uh, you know I would work on the teleprompter and put the papers in and, and run them for Sonia. Whatever anybody needed, I was happy to do it. So I did that, and then I um, got an, another job at Good Day New York in the morning on Channel 5. And that was from 5 to 1. I would go home, sleep two hours, and I would work at night at New York One News, where I had my camera. And nobody wanted to put me on air. Of course, you're too green. What do you know? You're young. Go get the coffee. Gladly. <laughs> so I would sleep two hours and go to New York One with my camera and run to the local fire and run here and run there. And I, was, and I would work at New York One only a few nights a week, so somehow I managed to sleep just enough. And. Um, then I got a job offer at Dow Jones, and I, that was the reason I got that job at Dow Jones was because at New York One, they sent me to find an area where a woman sadly had been raped in the middle of Central Park. And as I traced, and I was very empathetic to her, but I had this camera, and I had the battery packs, and I walked and walked and walked through Central Park on so little sleep. And all I said was, I really need a new job. <laughs> because I was exhausted and I'd been working so hard and I just put together a resume and I sent it out to 20 networks and somebody called. And it was Dow Jones. And because I had the business degree, I marched in there and they saw that I had already had television experience and so they said, can you start Monday? And I said, gladly. <laughs> and <laughs> it was a great job, it was a salary with benefits. And boy, was I glad. And I probably didn't have to work weekends either, so I could get to those family gatherings and all those barbecues that are always so much fun, as you well know. And then that's how it began. And then um, I started to learn the different, the different carpets in the House and the Senate so I could tell them a the difference. I started to uh, pull video for oil rigs. I started to yeah, learn so much about business news, just covering news for Dow Jones Television, which was also in conjunction with the Wall Street Journal. And then I went over to CNBC because they had a collaboration and uh, worked on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for Maria Bartiromo and Bob Pisani, and I was booking guests, but no one still put me on air. It wasn't until I got to Bloomberg that um, I went there with the condition that on the weekends, I could do a package, two minutes on something that we would all care about, and they said, fine, just come and be a producer and you can do a two minute package on the weekends. And then from there, it became, you know, it, it flourished, and the, you know, ducks get in the row, and, and everybody knows that wherever you are, wherever you're working, and if you keep working hard, and you keep your vision, and everybody tells you, no, you just need somebody somewhere to just say yes. And so someone at, at, at Bloomberg actually said yes and put me on a tape that they were sending over to Channel 11, WPIX in New York, for a business report, said, you know what, Nicole, pull some of your stuff from the weekend, and I just grabbed a red jacket, a green jacket tape, a white and I gave it to him, and they put 45 seconds, and WPIX looked at all the anchors and said, it was uh, unanimous, we want Nicole to do the business report. And so, with that, then I started doing all the affiliates. And that's what I do, so I get up every day, and I just, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was Woody Allen or someone said that 80% of success is just showing up. So I show up, get up at 3, 4 on a good day, I sleep late, right? And I get to work and, you know, you get the hair and makeup, which takes some time. But then you start reading, you read the research reports and the ball starts rolling. And, and his Evans and I were chatting and we were saying about routine versus what's alive and ever changing. And the routine is getting up and I have my coffee at the same time and I get the hair and makeup at the same time. But after that... 
Oh, it's anybody's guess. <laughs> but you show up and you get the news of the day. And then I roll over to the New York Stock Exchange down on Wall Street. And it's a really exciting place. And somehow, no matter how tired or whatever, we all just manage as Greeks to pull ourselves together. And that's one of the things that's instilled in us in a very young age that you, you have to do it. There is no choice. There's no room for failure. You do it. You do it with a passion. You get there. You do it with a smile. You do it well and make it happen. And so I just show up and, and cover the news every day. So I, I'm very humbled and it's very, and very honored and, and I feel very humbled that I just do what I do. But it's so nice to be honored um, for these things. But I can tell you about the New York Stock Exchange for all of you who are business buffs. It's really exciting when the bell rings every day at 9.30. It is so exciting. My whole life is in seconds. For, I'm on 25 times a day live on the Fox Business Network. And I also appear on Fox News Channel regularly on Hannity and O'Reilly and Geraldo and Fox and & Friends. And for all of you who are Fox fans, you know some of those folks. <laughs> some people I can see are very excited. <laughs> Today, and I have to, and I'll get to the New York Stock Exchange in a moment. But even today, I was I was so excited because Fox and Friends called and they wanted me to do last yesterday afternoon. They called and they said, "Can you do Fox and Friends in the morning, which is their national morning show? It's an exciting morning show." And they said, "Can you do it tomorrow morning?" I said, "Well, actually, I'm in Palm Beach." They said, "Don't worry, we have a studio in Palm Beach." Of course, they do, right? <laughs> um, but it was the one time that I actually said no because I love being on the show and I think it's a great show. But it was just a little too much with the kids and, and coming here today, which I was so excited about. I actually had to say no. Well, it killed me, but I did it. Because, you know, when you're a workaholic and you love what you do, whatever each one of you is involved in, whatever your passion, whether it's local, whether it's national, whether it's charity or school or business, you do it. And, and you never want to say no. And you never want to disappoint in any way anyone who you know cares about it too so you do it so anyway the new york stock exchange is an exciting place and um, the stock market for all of you who follow the stock market the beauty of it is that it's alive it's it's there's news every day i enjoy hearing about businesses such as starbucks which recently just hit an all-time high if you're a shareholder you're pretty happy I've also been reading lately about how Starbucks is trying to expand their business. They're going to serve beer and wine after 5 o'clock to try and get more customers. Right? You have to, isn't, it, isn't business news exciting? Then the Crocs, the shoemaker Crocs this week. All of our kids and grandkids, you know they have Crocs. Those rubbery shoes. They just filed for a business branding licenses so they can do apparel, socks, clothes, eyewear. Right? Expanding their business. Uh, I recently flew to Minneapolis to do a whole American Icon series on Target. 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 Right? And I interviewed the CEO of Target. And I asked him if he minded that a lot of people call it Target. He said, no, I love it. He said, and I said, it's French and fancy, right? He said he loves it. He, he embraces it and he loves it. They're expanding in Canada because they are already widely recognized in Canada. So I had a great day in Minneapolis at Target interviewing everybody from marketing to the internet people and seeing what was hot for Christmas. Um, next week I'm interviewing the CEO of GameStop. All right, come on. All of those kids who play Nintendo, Wii, GameStop is the place. You give my kids a $20 gift card to GameStop, they cheer. So that's another hot place, so another growing business. But the New York Stock Exchange, as far as the stock market, and that's really the main idea, is just the overall market. And we're having a great year so far, right? So you're up between 6 and 11 percent, depending on whether you're looking at the Dow or the tech-heavy NASDAQ. So that you're already making money if you're in your 401ks and IRAs and such. So that's some good news. What's interesting is Greece, and by the way, I get blamed all the time for everything that's going on in Greece. Well, then, let's go to our, our Greek uh, anchor. Nicole, what do you think about what's going on in Greece? And, you know, it, jokes aside, it's devastating to watch your own people in turmoil. Uh, chaos has ensued. There were some deaths in a, in a bank at one point. Um, Greece, like so many other countries in Europe, are struggling. And it's not only Greece, it's all those pig nations, right? Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Spain. Um, 
they're all trying to work their way up and out, but tough austerity measures make it hard for the Greeks, right? They're used to one way, and your whole world gets turned upside down. So, you know, we, even today, we're reading about they, they've accepted the terms of the new bailout. Let's see if it happens. And I think everybody on Wall Street knows that it's a day-to-day -day thing. And what happens is every headline in Greece moves our markets here in the States. Because if the euro goes down, the US dollar goes up, right? And then all of these things affect our market. So uh, it's, a, it's an inverse relationship. When the dollar is lower, then we see equities and commodities moving higher. When the dollar is higher, we often see equities and commodities moving lower. So it's not always, and nothing is always, but often. But so, so Greece and the headlines in Greece and Europe in particular are moving our markets here at home. As far as uh, commodities and equities, I can tell you for equities, some of the traders, I can only quote traders because I am not a research analyst, nor am I a stock, uh, you know, I'm not giving you stock advice because that's not my job, I'm just supposed to be fair and balanced. But uh, the trend has been a good one thus far. Many of the banks are up between 20, 30, 40% in some cases, and the trend continues to the upside, but they've been saying that once you know, you sell in May and go away, that's a big Wall Street saying, um, that a lot of people come June, May, June, they're really gonna be focused on the 2012 elections, and you may not see as much action in the markets, or they may not trend higher, you may see uh, people just sort of very much a wait and see mode. So we may see a little bit of a run, but their guess is as good as anybody's. As far as oil and gold, well, uh, let's see, T. Boone Pickens, who everybody knows um, him for legendary oil guy, he was talking about oil, and he thinks it's gonna be lower, and some of, the, some of the gold analysts, if you're a gold buff, it's been hovering around 1,700 a troy ounce, probably likely to go to the upside. So that's, the, that's the, uh, the stock market stuff. Being at the New York Stock Exchange, I have to say, I get to meet really exciting people. Of course, as I mentioned, Fortune 500 CEOs, and I, and I love them, and I think they're really exciting, and they're smart, and I really respect what they do. But I get to meet a lot of other people that are really fun, and ones that I really love. So I can tell you that I was recently serenaded by Jose Feliciano singing Feliz Navidad. <laughs> oh my goodness, I sat there, and there, he was at the New York Stock Exchange, he took his guitar, I said, please, uh, can you come on Fox? I can have it happen in five minutes or less, we'll get you on TV. And he said yes. And he was talking about his new CD that he's going to redo some Elvis songs for all of you who are Blue Suede Shoes fans. He's going to redo some songs, but I said, how about Feliz Navidad, the most favorite, famous song around the world. And he just went, Feliz Navidad, and I, my knees buckled. Beautiful. But I can tell you, we mentioned all the CEOs. Um, I love people in the service. Fox News is always very big on everything from those who are serving now, wounded warriors. That's something, whenever those guys come by on the New York Stock Exchange, I'll do my stock market report with whoever's there, Army, Navy, Marines, whoever. We, we are so proud of our servicemen abroad. That's certainly something that always is really exciting. <laughs> Politicians. I know Hillary Clinton came by uh, recently, so I, it wasn't that long ago. I got to take a nice picture with her. She was really very nice to meet her. The models, I'm all about the supermodels. Okay, so I don't know if you're Christy Turlington or Tyra Banks or Naomi Campbell. They all come to the New York Stock Exchange, and I just admire just their beauty and grace and such. And the Sports Illustrated models will be there on Tuesday, so if you wanted to tune in, I'm going to try and get them on Tuesday. If my boss says yes. Um, sports, we have the Yankees, we've had um, you know, the Ravens, we've had Will Witherspoon, the Cy Young, Cy Young Award uh, winner was there just recently. Clayton Kershaw, he was great. A lot of people come because they're um, tied in with charity as well, so they're there promoting a particular charity, but at the same time, I get to meet them. Artists, like I mentioned, Jose Feliciano. Um, how about Gene Simmons from KISS? I mean, how cool is that? For anybody in a different generation than some of you, but wow, that was cool. <laughs> Belle Biv DeVoe, they serenaded me a cappella. Foreigner, Ashanti, Billy Ray Cyrus, and then last but not least, just famous people who, whom I just bump into either at work or anybody from Richard Gere to Angelina Jolie, um, Triple H and Kelly Kelly, if you're big wrestling fans, Kelly Kelly's gorgeous. 
um, and, and such. And Richard Simmons, who is a, a, a mogul entrepreneur. And just yesterday, the guys from Swamp came by, and what they, what do they 